Oh, hi. Welcome back to Deb's Big Backyard. I'm Deb. And I was just sizing up this old window that's been sitting in our garage forever, thinking, what a great thing to use to make a cold frame. I know a little bit about cold frames, and basically I do know that they extend the gardening season so that you can garden year round. I want to do that, but I need some tips. So I'm heading over to Seamus Ford. He's a community gardener and the co-founder of Root Riot, which enables people around here who don't have backyards like me to grow vegetables. He's waiting. Let's go. Hi, Seamus. I'm here with my window. Hi, Deb. How are you? <laughs> good. How you doing? Really good. Great. Really good. Um, we're here with Seamus Ford. Uh, Seamus, I know who you are, but why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself for sure. everyone? Sure. Sure. Uh, my name is Seamus Ford. I'm the co-founder of Root Riot Urban, Urban Garden Network. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a community-based organization that has gardens in Oak Park, here in Austin, East Garfield Park, we're working on uh, two more gardens here on the west side at schools. We also have some in Forest Park, but you know, what we're really committed to is creating spaces for people to learn about how to garden, and in doing so, have those spaces really become a nexus point for community in places where it's perhaps been lacking. I know about the community garden and all the stuff, wonderful things that people have been planting in those raised beds, but today I'm here about cold framing, okay. which because of all the things that you're doing in your community garden and in your big backyard, I figured you could give me a few tips. Absolutely. So Absolutely. what's going on with a cold frame? What is it and why should people consider building one and using it? Well, there's a couple reasons. So, you know, one, one of the things is that, um, you know, here we are, you know, it's almost late April, mm -hmm. and you had a very, very, very brutal winter, <laughs> right? And um, I think one of the things that you know people will find cold friends are really useful for is even when the winter's bad, they give you a chance to get started and keep your garden on mm -hmm. pace for what you want. A lot of people have old things, old windows in their garages. Is this something that uh, someone could start with? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's actually ideal. Um, there's two reasons why this is really good. Uh, just to kind of give you the principle of a cold frame, what it is, is it's a, it, it's a heat sink. So what you're doing is you're, you're capturing solar gain. Mm -hmm. And what, what happens is just by simply putting a window over the frame, the sunlight that hits the soil obviously warms it up during the right. day. It warms it up more because the heat doesn't escape into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It actually is concentrated down in the soil. Right. And then when you um, till the soil and aerate it, uh, it actually comes back to life. So, you know, where the ground might actually be frozen outside the cold frame, mm -hmm. it's literally teeming with life. The first thing here, let me just kind of show you how this is built. It's I, I did my own research on the internet and I came up with probably the consensus of creating a cold frame for our latitude is about a 27 degree angle. Okay. So that, that it's, it's not too high um, and you know the, the sun will start to get higher in the sky each day. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this is something that uh, lets enough light in yeah. For the plants to actually get what they need, um, but it 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 by having it lower to the soil, uh, you you concentrate the heat a bit more. Well, the one thing that, that that's a big thing in our house is that we love growing heirloom tomatoes, and what we've done in the past is we've started them out um, earlier in the basement, and then they've gotten leggy and then it's been too cold to bring them out. Yeah. And, and we actually have done the hoop kind of farming before, and that's why I wanted to, I didn't want to go through that again. I wanted to go to a cold frame. One, one, of, the so, things that, one of the things that's really great about a cold frame with tomatoes is that it, 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 it can harden them off, and it actually can keep the, them from getting too leggy. You know, no matter how good your indoor grow lights are, it's just simply not the same as the sun. Right. And the sun will, they, the tomatoes tend, if they're in the sun, they tend not to get leggy and get, right. you know, 
the, the, all that the, stuff. the whole stem stays green. One of the things about you know being exposed to all the elements is that you know often things move and change position. The hinges might not work. Right. Um, you know, it kind of depends on how often you want to. Mm -hmm. How often you want to have this open and close. Mm -hmm. So, do you need to have hinges on it? Can you just uh, create something and, and put a window on it? Like I noticed uh, with this one over here, you just had a little lip. Uh, no, you do not need to have hinges For on it. For people who aren't handy. <laughs> For people who aren't handy, you can just you can just put it on there, right? Honestly, you could take some bricks and kind of level it off and put some earth around it and just. Put it hey. on there like a gasket. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, I like that. So I've got some stones from the uh, little construction project that yeah. I'm involved in. Mm -hmm. And we'll take the bricks and we'll kind of measure out the width that we're looking at. So if you'd hold that for a moment. Sure. Okay. Here we go. So this gives us the basic, oops, sorry. This gives us the basic shape. Yeah, look at that. So that's all the more angle you need. Okay. Um, I'll take something here and here. Let's just see how the window might lay okay. at that angle. All right. Look at that. All right, oh, so what that are you works. doing now? What are you, why are you doing that? This is um, so that the air I see is not going to escape. Oh, uh, so you're putting in some sort of some earth, mother earth, earth insulation, earth mortar, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, this is just down and dirty. I mean, you just don't have to do anything fancy. You do your preparation. Right. Well, you prepare your soil. <laughs> And, and, and in this, like, what could we plant in this? If we went home today right and Right now, did today, this, yeah. I do radishes. I go for it with lettuce. I, I would do spinach. Mm -hmm. I do anything that you ordinarily would plant early in the season. Goofy. <laughs> so uh, we can both transplant and do right. seedlings. Okay. And, you know, on the theme of experimenting, Right. Let's yeah, the both. other thing about lettuce is they are going to compete with one another. See, some people broadcast them. Yeah. Which is, you know, basically just taking a handful and tossing it on the. Yeah. Or, or you do rows. Um, I personally found that rows seem to. Part of this better. is that you just have to be willing to experiment yeah because you know one of the things that i think is is important to keep in mind is that you know a lot of the common knowledge or what was common knowledge about how to grow things is mm -hmm. is disappeared right and so we have a lot of people that you know are trying for the first time mm -hmm. we need to fail we need to experiment we need to right you know Go for it. Um, what water needs does something like this have? Um, Not that much. I'd say I'd say once every seven or eight days. Oh wow! To be honest, we're gonna really really soak it. Put okay. the lid on and we'll you make. Want to go ahead and sure. do the honors? We'll All make right, a, grow, make... babies, grow. That's right. <laughs> be free. Be free, be and free it's and time grow. to go. This so is... there's a there's a few air gaps in there. Not mm -hmm. a problem, mm -hmm. but it'll it'll certainly. Uh, do the trick, particularly the double pane, pane glass. Mm -hmm. And I would say in two weeks, the seedlings will start and the lettuce in the front of the frame will be bushy and we'll be eating it. So I think that we've done our good duty here today of hopefully more gardeners are understanding what a cold frame is and what you can put in it. Um, I'm Deb and this is? Seamus. And this is Deb's Big Backyard on the Road. See you next time.